Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn. Welcome back to my life, living in an RV. Happy Sunday. You ready to jump back in your time machine? <laughs> this is a little bit of a joke. Uh, I am taking you back to when I fled the fires in New Mexico and headed north toward Colorado. So in today's video, I am sharing a beautiful, awesome, great camp with you in Colorado. Also a trip into town and so much more. So ready to hang out with me today? Let's get started. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to mind your own. Same old street with the same old sound. my third morning here in Colorado and out for exploring another trail right across the road from my uh, camp that I missed the first couple times I went up the road and I saw it yesterday I think and I'm like I gotta go explore that and it's been gorgeous I have to do a little limbo here what <sighs> there we go ta-da <laughs> Um, this is just my morning walk. I just brought coffee and uh, just wanted to explore this. It's beautiful. Beautiful morning. And there's even a creek down here. Sadie's chasing something. Good girl. Good girl. What'd you see? Anyway, I've just been shooting a lot of pictures and video of the gorgeous scenery here, and I do that a lot, and then I don't have any talkie-talkie to go with it, and I'm like, where do I put it in the video, and how do I work it in? So, I'm talking. <laughs> Telling you that's what this is. Whether I'll use it or not, I don't know, but another gorgeous morning walk in Colorado. I'm happy I came to Colorado. It's beautiful. Green. It's so green. Even a little bit of water. Look. Go get drink. Get drink. She's a busy girl. She's a very busy girl, huh? You're a very busy girl. Hold up, it's my second morning. Well, I got here at 10 o'clock the first morning, so I don't know if that counts as a morning, 
I think it does. But I didn't do much. Whew. The elevation, man. Nine, 9,200 feet. And hills. Not my friend. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. You know what? I'll show you camp when I get there. I don't think I've showed you camp yet. I uh, got really set up. Made myself comfy. <laughs> Pretty sure these are cottonwoods. They're beautiful. Bright green this time of year. And these, I don't know what these are. They're beautiful. They grow out of these, which are everywhere. And I've seen these in every uh, every state I've backpacked in. California, Colorado. Where else have I backpacked? Well, not at, uh, at Alaska. But these... They come up in the spring in uh, moist areas. So areas that that get a lot of moisture from snow. So the snow melts and these things bloom. I've seen it on a lot of backpacking trips. So you'll see them mostly in low-lying areas. See, like this meadow here. There's one behind me, behind my camp. I'll show you. I'll have to find out what they are. Not all of them bloom, it seems. But yeah. Low-lying moisture. They take a lot of moisture. What you got there? What is it? You gonna get it? You gonna get it? Is Sadie living her best doggy life? Yes. Come on. They're beautiful, though, aren't they? Just the way they are. Look at that. Gorgeous texture, color, contours. They're little works of art. Pretty. He's making coffee. I'll be right out. What are you waiting for? Want to play? Where's your ball?
welcome to my first Colorado hike of the season. Yeah, not bad. This lake is only, it's Buckles Lake. It's only not even a mile from the trailhead. It's all downhill, but not bad. Um, and I'm two and a half miles from my camp. I road walked most of the way up to the trailhead. Um, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Even a few snow flurries in the air this morning. I haven't been able to catch them, but oh my gosh. It's been a long time since I've hiked to a lake that you can only get to by hiking. Something special about it, you know? Here all the wildlife. Spring in Colorado at 9,200 feet. A little rain last night. My first night in Colorado. A little rain. Some snow flurries. In, uh, what is it? End of May. You can see it's low, especially for this time of year. Should be, they should be at full capacity. You can tell it's really low. But if you uh, want to try backpacking, I did this. I showed you one in the Adirondacks. This is another great one, just a mile from the trail, and you're in national forest. Um, I'm not seeing any signs. Double check before you do it if you want to do it, but. I'm not seeing any signs that you can't backpack out here in camp. Uh, super easy. You know, great beginner's trip. Especially great solo beginner's trip. So just not even a mile. Just put your backpack on from the trailhead and come down here and spend the night. Um, you know, level of comfort, being close to your car, kind of getting used to being out here by yourself. And to really, this would be a great beginner, you know, in a beautiful place to spend the night. I'm tempted to go get my backpack and come out. I won't. <laughs> For one thing, it's going to be like low 30s tonight. Not that I haven't camped in the low 30s before. In a 10, I have, but I don't know. The sounds, man, just. what it's all about. The rest is just noise. Check this out. I saw this from across the lake. Perfect place to pitch your tent. Look at this. <laughs> and you got the little itty bitty stream running through. Got some snow over there. Oh my God. Perfect place to pitch your tent. This is gorgeous. Of course you have to pitch your tent at least a hundred feet away from water. So out in the Meadow. Wow. Actually better up in the woods than in the meadow. The meadow is uh, a water source in the spring and when the snow melts. So you're better off not camping right in the middle of the meadow. I mean, you shouldn't. Leave no trace and all. Oh my gosh, look! I'm so glad I came over here. I almost turned around and went back. I'm at almost three miles already. Look at this though. Heaven! I'm in heaven! So is she. Look at the snow. <laughs> Ooh. 
But yeah, if I were to backpack out here, I'd come over here. Actually, look at up there behind that tree. Oh, that's where I would camp. Oh, you can smell the earthy. Oh my gosh. There's something earthy coming up. Oh. Wanna get a drink? Get a drink. Get a drink. Good girl. She knows it. Good girl. Does that feel good? <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> oh, this, yeah, there's water running all through here, so you'd have to go up. Oh, my gosh. Actually, I see a spot in the trees over there. I'm, like, really tempted to come back with my backpack. Maybe I will. Huh. Looking for spots. It's a little bit sloped, bumpy for a tent. Wow. And I am being hyper aware of my surroundings. Bears are waking up. So, um, making a lot of noise mostly. Making sure Sadie, Sadie stays close where I can see her. Uh, making noise is the best defense. If they hear you coming, they're not going to want to be around. So... Oh my god, this is amazing. <sighs> what a bummer. This is a man made lake. <laughs> I thought it was natural, but it's not. Any uh, horror or science fiction writers out there? I have a great idea for a story that trees stalk these people. They hunt them down and they carve their names on their faces. <laughs> So tree plus grass with a heart around it. Tree plus sunshine with a heart around it. And they carve it on their face. Look at it. So they, they find John. They find Mo. And they carve on Mo's face. Trees. <laughs> That'd be a great horror story. And maybe it would make, th make people think twice before defacing Mother Nature. Or maybe Mother Nature hunts them down. Maybe Mother Nature is a superhero <laughs> that hunts them down and makes them pay. Some good ideas there. You can have them. Running out of battery. This was supposed to be a three mile hike. It's going to be like six. Brought my backpack. Water and snacks for Sadie and me. Getting better. Actually, I'm learning when I pack a backpack. I go further. All right. I enjoy the rest of my hike. I hope you enjoyed it too. See you back at camp.
looks like it was hail. Well, good morning at 9,000 feet in May. <laughs> Almost Memorial Day. Yeah, we had hail, it looks like. So it sounded like rain, but it was heavy rain. I heard, like, not, he not, it, it was, it's, in retrospect, it was hail that I heard. Not, not heavy rain, but big, big rain, big drops of rain. But most of it's melted by now. It's not too bad out here. It's 38 degrees, I think. It doesn't feel too bad. Gorgeous morning. We got another one. Come on. I just did a heavy cleaning in the mud. I can't escape it. Unless I take my shoes off every time I come in. This helps a little bit, but not enough. Look at it. It's impossible to stay clean. It really is. Good morning. Well, I hadn't planned on staying here very long, but a ranger came by and reminded me that it's Memorial Weekend coming up. So this is an awesome spot. There's nobody around me. Nobody can camp around me. So even if this forest gets crowded, I'm not going to be crowded. So I'm a little low on propane. I don't know. I'm I'm at an eighth of a tank. And uh, I, I kind of want to push it to see how far I can go. But I really want to stay here through the holiday. So I'm going to leave today. Um, go into town and resupply and come back. So I thought I would show you my setup for doing that. So I uh, set up a sign with the date on it. So the date on it so that because it's only going to be the tent and my... So I put up the tent, my screen tent, and I put out my rug and I'm going to leave some other things. I'm not going to leave my solar panel, but... Um, the date that you're here, today's that's, that's today's date, and occupied. And the reason you want to do that is because without, like, a real tent here or anything, somebody might think it's just an abandoned camp and they might be tempted to camp here anyway. So I put the date on it to let them know I'm here. It's today. Uh, the other thing is uh, I am going to take the solar panel. I've had things walking away from camp this year. Dog toys up near Santa Fe, two of Sadie's favorite toys just disappeared from camp. And I know one, you know, they were expensive Kong toys. And um, I know I didn't lose them. I looked around for days. I looked for them and we didn't lose them. They literally disappeared from our camp. So I'm not going to take any chances with the solar panel. I'm not going to leave that here. So basically, rule of thumb, don't leave anything behind that you don't, that you can't lose, right? Does that make sense? Don't leave anything. I barely made it through my first cup of coffee. It's not even nine. I have a 40 minute drive into Pagosa Springs. <clears throat> get propane. I'll probably get a couple groceries. I just filled up with water right before I got here. So that should <clears throat> do me until uh, next week. And and I'm, I'll be ready to move by then. So I mean, if I see a dump station, I might go ahead and do it. But I've only been five days on what I've my dump in my water. So <clears throat> that's it. Taking my garbage in. So taking this, my, my garbage is pretty full. So I'm going to take this in and hopefully find a place to dump it. And pull in my solar panel. And uh, that's it. We're ready to ready to hit the road. <laughs> you want to go? So part of the reason I decided to go get propane is because it has literally been below freezing at night. And the past few days have only been about 50 degrees. And I've been rationing my propane, so I haven't been turning on my heat a, a much. I decided finally, I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm going to turn on my heat. Um, but, uh, look at, so somebody's been camped down here since I got here. There was one, there was a truck camper they left, and then a, and then a Class C went in there. Look, look how beautiful that is. 
I like mine because it's a little bit off, off, a little bit up off the road. But yeah, and I, it, I mean, it's warming up, and that was part of the reason I was. I've been debating for days whether I want to go, and honestly, the reason I'm going is just so that I can stop stressing about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I have been using the heat a little bit, and like I've been baking and stuff to warm it up in here. But why stress yourself out when you can just go into town? Although going into town has its own stresses about leaving things behind and is somebody going to take my spot? That's never happened. Nobody's ever taken my spot, knock on wood. But with Memorial Weekend coming up, it's Wednesday. I decided I needed to do it now before people do start coming in for the weekend. So that's what I'm doing. But Ghost of Springs, I don't think I've ever been there before. We'll see what it's like. Oops, I dropped you.
contained. So I think I'm just gonna get a couple groceries and head out of town. Unless I see something interesting. Well, Pagosa Springs is home to the world's deepest hot spring. That's kind of cool. I don't really want to go to the hot springs today, though. Brew pub, ski and bow rack, dispensary. Oh, I just passed what set up food court, which looked like it was set up for food trucks, but there weren't any there. That would be fun. Look at the river. Oh man. Himalayan kitchen? Well, isn't this just adorable? So, the couple in the camper truck, the truck camper that were uh, camped near me that I talked to one day on a cross paths on a walk said that they were coming in they were from Albuquerque they were coming into Pocosa Springs there's a brewery here that they said has the best lamb burger lamb burger which they'd ever had and she said it was delicious so if you guys like lamb I don't know what the brewery is because I don't eat that stuff but you might want to look it up <laughs> Should we go back to camp? We gotta find some place to dump our garbage. What do you think? CDT hikers. Oh my gosh. Been seeing a lot of the CDT hikers in, uh, where was I? Another small town getting down here. You know, they get off trail. Remember like I did on the PCT, they get off trail to come into town and resupply. There's another one guy about my age. Okay. So the ones uh, who can afford it, rent a room, take a shower. Oftentimes, if you read any, any through hiker uh, books, they, uh, they often like rent a room and they share it with like five people sleeping on the floor and everything to save money. Uh, so that they can get a shower and rest up before they get back on the trail. So it's kind of fun to think about the young people doing it, the f young people who find their community. That's not my experience. I did everything alone, but yeah. So uh, these towns off this off the trail are big resupply towns, and you always see people with um, backpacks, well, depending on time of year. But anyway, I'm rambling. It's just kind of cool to see and to think about my times through hiking. It was fun times. Right now I'm just wandering aimlessly looking for a place to dump my garbage. Yeah. Town hall. Ooh, a park. Ooh. Okay. I saw a sign for a park. So, they often have garbage cans. Is that it? Nope. That's not a park. some at least. No camping or overnight parking. Alright. Pretty little park. Alright. I was able to get rid of all of it. Yay! That worked out quite well. Okay, I think I've had enough civilization for one day. I'm ready to head back. Pretty little town, that's for sure. Reminds me of Lake Tahoe.
which isn't uh, looking at my time I'm running out of like space on my on my uh, camera on my phone to shoot because I'm shooting in higher quality these days anyway yeah it reminds me of Lake Tahoe a lot you know that crunchy granola mountainy laid back kind of vibe it's really nice I like it so I'm gonna get back to camp though it's after 11 Mexico plates. I'm wondering how many, you know, Memorial Day is coming up, how many people are choosing to come up to Colorado because four, so far, four out of the five, I think it was four out of the five national forests in New Mexico are closed and it's smoky and it's dangerous because it's so dry. I just heard, learned from the guy who did my, um, propane at tractor supply that there's a big fire burning here and he pointed out the fire fighter camps just across the way so keep an eye on that can't remember where he said it was but I'll have to look it up later just keep an eye on it crazy times scarier than the familiar, right? You think about that. I'm driving on a road that when I first came in, it's a little narrow, uh, etched into a mountain. When I first came in, it was a little scary. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to drive out that road in the rain. Driving again the second time, I'm like, this is nothing. So I think the lesson here is that if you're afraid of something, make it familiar, right? And I've told the story before about how I was afraid to spend the night in the woods alone, so I went out and did it. The best way to get over your fears, because fears are often being afraid of the unfamiliar, is to become familiar with your fear. Whatever is afraid of, I mean, to do it. Just do it. Face your fears. sweet home everything is just as I left it everything is looking intact a little bit of wind but uh, here's another tip for you put the rug out and put your placemat down or your doormat down by your door and leave your left any leveling blocks that you're using uh, right next to where they were that helps you figure out where you were before especially if you have a hard time getting level so all right time to eat I haven't eaten yet today. Time to and put my groceries away. But that was nice. It's like noon. Nice quick trip into town. Gorgeous. Now I get to stay here for another week. Want to eat? Come on, say girl. Don't you want to eat? No? You're not hungry? Trying to add more protein in my diet, so my oatmeal gets a scoop of this really good plant protein, and I'm still doing my hormone tea and seed routine, so I'm on the flax seed and pumpkin seed, so I add that to my oatmeal with some almonds, no, walnuts, 
and blueberries. And it's super filling and all that protein in there and the nuts and seeds, it's really, really good for you. So I'm gonna eat. Maybe I'll sit outside. It's nice out finally. Outside. You have food in your dish. You have food in your dish. Okay, so I think I'm going to end the video there. This has already been a long video. I do have some more footage of this camp, and, and maybe we'll work it into the next vi uh, the next travel video next Sunday. Thank you all so much for being here, and thank you for checking your subscriptions. Every time I ask you to make sure you're still subscribed to my channel, my subscriber count goes way higher because YouTube unsubscribes people. It's the weirdest thing. So do me a favor, even if you think you're subscribed to my channel, don't Double check, make sure you're still subscribed, make sure you click that little bell so that you get notified every time I put out a video. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'm feeling better. I had a long day of travel yesterday and I was exhausted. I actually shot it, it's gonna be a fun video. Um, it was a long day and I was exhausted by the end of the day and I thought for sure I was gonna crash today, but I haven't. I do notice when I talk, I'm a little out of breath, but I'm doing much better. So that's really good news, I'm really happy. And in case you missed it, um, check out the video. I'll put the video right over here. I've had COVID. All right, I'll see you soon. Double check your subscriptions. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with me. I will see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. See you soon.